Hello, my friends. Thanks for joining me today at the Punlo Coffee Table for a demo. You know, it occurred to me as I was preparing some of my research projects to present here on the coffee table that I'd never shown you the tools that I've been using. And I know that you're very capable of finding them for yourself, but I thought it might be interesting to at least share some of those with you. Uh, the last time I think I shared, you know, how I do searches, the word searches and the phrases with some of the websites that I personally prefer. But another thing I've done in a lot of these videos is talked about the Greek or the Hebrew, the lexicons and the cross-referencing. And there's some just amazing tools out there that you can use. And I wanted to show you what those look like today. And now I know that you probably have things that you use yourself. So this is just meant to be a demonstration of how I've been doing these projects. So if you wanted to recreate what I have done, you could go back and test me and check and make sure that what I have been telling you is actually what these resources say. I'm gonna show you five tools today. Biblehub.com, blueletterbible.org, biblestudytools.com, and then a couple Texas Receptus sites. And I'll put those up on the screen so you can see them. Okay. Well, what I wanted to show you today was this website. And I showed this website last time. This is biblehub.com. This is the website I use most often when I'm preparing one of these presentations. And it's just because it's so easy for me to navigate can go choose a scripture. And let's let's look at one that we looked at in one of the recent messages. Mark chapter 16. You have to do this twice. It's just the way it works. Scroll down chapter 16. And here we have a scripture and you see it here in the NIV. And if I scroll down, you can see all these different translations are available just for you to cross-reference. And there's a lot of information here on the screen. It also allows you to click over here. You can go to the full chapter at other references in the Bible. If I wanna home in just on a translation, we're talking about, I'm gonna read out of New Living. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved and anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. Well, a question I often ask is, Okay, what were the original words? Well, I can scroll up here and see where it says Greek and lexicon. I like the lexicon the best. I'll click on this and then you can see what it does. What it does is it brings up John or Mark chapter 16, verse 16. And you see, this is the New American Standard Bible version. That just happens to be the one that's in this tool. It has the verse. It has the Greek word that it was translated from. And then what that Greek word means, so you can get an idea of what their original language was trying to say. It, if you click on one of these, this goes to Strong's. And in Strong's, it gives you a phonic spelling so you can learn how to pronounce the word. It gives you a whole bunch of uses of that word. So this pistiu means to believe or entrust. It can mean to have faith in, trust in, pass, or I'm entrusted with. Very good, very interesting. Let me go back again. But you can dig deeper. In Greek, everything's based on root words, kind of similar to English. And you can go over to the far right and you can see what the origin of that word is. And it's the word pistis. And we can go in here. And we can look again how it's phonically spelled, what it means, and to dig deeper into the meaning of that word, it is faith, belief, trust, confidence, fidelity, and faithfulness. It gives you this bigger picture of what the word is trying to convey in the original language. And I can go back again and go down to the disbelief, you know, it's 
a form of a pistios and I can click on this and it takes me again into Strong's and I get all the different word usage. I get a phonics so I can try to pronounce it and I find it really helpful. And you can go through a lot of cross-referencing very quickly with this tool. And again, I, I, I find Bible Hub really, really useful. If I'm not sure and I want to see how the translators have done things, I can click on the parallel and then go back to this parallel. I can see how all these different translators have translated this word. And you see it's believe in all of these. So the question is, what does the English word believe mean or was intended to mean? You go back to the pistis and it gives you a bigger, more full understanding of why we use the word believe in English. But we really need to understand what the word meant in Greek where the original was written. So I love this tool. I use it a lot. Um, I don't know that much about the people that put this together, but I know I, you know, I can get so many English translations of the Bible. I can get my Greek lexicon from the New American Standard really easy this way. Another tool I like to use, and I, I talked about it last time, is, oops, sorry, blueletterbible.org. This has got a great search engine, and we talked about this last time. Type in Mark. 16 we'll do king james bible this time and again it brings up my tool it shows the way it comes up in blue letter bible it shows each verse individually and the reason that is is if you scroll over to the left where it says tools you see there's a drop down it talks about all these different uh, information you can get about that verse the interlinear is the one that I use and what it does is again brings up the Greek. The really nice thing here is I can go over and it will actually play someone speaking the word. I won't do that for you today because I don't have the rights to do that, but you can listen to the word being spoken in Greek, uh, which gives you a better opportunity to say it. I, I, I can't copy it very well, but I do my best. But I really like that about this tool because it helps me to learn how to say the words in Greek if I'm going to try to pass that on to someone else. And there are lots of amazing tools right here at your fingertips. You got cross references which show all the places that the similar phrase is used. And again, these are phrases that it's translating. It also, you know, take you to dictionaries so you can learn more about the particular thing. And I mean, this, this tool has a lot of things at your fingertips, you know, maps, uh, timelines, not all of them you're going to agree with, but the maps are accurate. Um, some of the descriptions might not be what you would, but that's up to you to, to use your Use this Holy Spirit that's within you to help discern what it is that you want to see. And I, I, what I like is going to the Bibles and I can see Mark 16, 16 and all these different translations. And there's more translations here than some of the other websites. But again, I really like the being able to listen to the Greek. It helps me to... Uh, to understand and to speak the language a little better. Uh, I don't speak it at all, but to be able to actually pronounce the words properly. Uh, another one is Bible study tools.com. Again, I don't use this as much as I maybe should. And the reason is all these pop-up advertisements really annoy me to say the least, but they do have, uh, concordances and lexicons so you can again go to mark 16 16 find it in the bible we'll pull up our king james version and then we'll say okay i want to uh, 
see it in a lexicon. And then here you see that there's different lexicons. There's Hebrew lexicon. There's a Greek lexicon. I'm not going to get into it in detail. See, the pop-ups are, are kind of annoying. But they have both the King James Greek version online as well as the New American Standard lexicon. And I think that's really valuable sometimes to look at both of them because they don't agree word for word, even in the Greek. The Texas Receptus, which was used for the King James, has a lot of differences with the one used for like the New American Standard. And there's other versions of Greek out there. Uh, you know, the United Bible Society has one. The American Bible Society has one. There's There's a lot of them. But at least you can look at the Greek for the King James and the New American Standard with these tools really easy. And if you really love your King James Bible, and I know many of you do, there's a couple of websites that really, their purpose is Texas Receptus, which is the King James. Uh, this website, you can see the name up here. Uh, they have all the different versions of the Greek Texas Receptus. It's a little tougher to manipulate because you have to kind of understand the language and go back and forth with the wording. But, you know, it's here. Uh, it compares itself to the Latin Vulgate, the Texas Receptus, and then the King James Version parallels. So you can get a, a lot of information really quickly. And then the last one I wanted to mention is this one called the Texas Receptus Bibles. And again, it's concentrating on the King James Version of the Bible and other Bibles that were translated from the Texas Receptus version of the Greek, which is an older version of the Greek. So use these tools. Uh, I, I tend to use Blue Letter or Bible Hub. And when I'm talking to you in one of my sessions, I'm going to probably be using Bible Hub. Greek, because I just find it so easy. You know, I can find my my verse. I click on the lexicon. It takes me to the words, and I'm going to zero in on believe and disbelief for this exercise. So, pistius and apistias, and the root word is pistis and apistos, and I can click on those, and I can learn what those words are defined to be. So I get a better understanding of what Mark really meant when he used these words in his translation. And it helps me get a deeper, more complete view of these ancient manuscripts. Obviously, when we're reading in English or we're reading in Tagalog or our own native language, whatever that might be, again, a lot is left and lost in translation. So sometimes it's useful to go back and look at the original word, even though it's not the original manuscript. At least it's in the original language. And at least get an understanding of what that word meant in that language, how it was used in that language. And then you got a better idea of how the translators took it from Greek or Hebrew into English or another language. You know, they're not perfect, just like we're not perfect. So it's good to understand what they were thinking when they made that translation. And we also have to understand that the word usage when they did these translations has changed. You know, words are used different today than they were even 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. So looking back at the original manuscript helps us get a better understanding of what God's message is for us. And one hesitation I'll have you with Greek is if you don't speak Greek, this is just a tool. You're not going to become a Greek expert doing this. But if you understand how Greek was used in that day and age, which is what these lexicons are trying to teach you, they're not perfect, but they're trying to teach you, you get a better idea of what the message was that the Bible author was trying to convey. You know, what was God trying to say through that author to us? Well, we have to understand it in that original language to get that original message. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, I really enjoy looking into the language usages. It helps me understand better what was meant 
And so I hope this will be helpful to you. There are a lot of resources out there and I don't want to endorse any of these. These are just the ones that I use predominantly in my own personal studies. I'm sure there's others that are out there that might be easier for you to use, but I wanted to show you just how easy it was to manipulate these few tools. I often just use the internet search engines like Google or Yahoo or Bing or DuckDuckGo and there's a lot of others. And you can hear words in Greek and Hebrew there. You can type in the word and it will give you the equivalent in those original languages. And I think sometimes it's really helpful to hear it. I, I think uh, hearing helps it kind of get ingrained into your memory in a way that is is different. I think the same with whatever language you are speaking or reading. So again, I I hope that these tools can be useful to you and I hope you can recreate what I have done. You know, any of the studies that I'm going to present here on the website are going to use these tools. So when I say I use bulletterbible.org. Now you know where that is. Now you kind of can see how to manipulate it. Uh, so you can go and test me, uh, make sure what I'm saying is right, because I'm not infallible by any stretch. And if you can reproduce what I've done, then you can understand how I've come up with my opinion on some of these topics. So let's close, cl close with a prayer today. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these amazing tools. I know there is a lot of bad things about the internet, but you always find a way to use even bad things for your purposes. And even the internet can be an amazing tool for good. You know, it enables people even like me to read and study and study deeper your your Bible, your word, in a way that I couldn't without these tools. And I'm so thankful to you, Lord, for providing them to us so we can have a deeper and more meaningful relationship with you. And I ask all these things in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So thank you for joining me today at the Punlo Coffee Table for a demo. I hope you liked this message. And if you did, Click like, it does help us. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the notification bell. That way you'll get notified the next time that we... ...the time uh, to spend a little time here on the, my computer with me so you can uh, see how I have done some of these uh, research projects. And just by the way, the picture in the background is not actually where I'm at. It's actually one of my favorite places in the world. This is, was, or was my uncle's cabin in Colorado. I spent a lot of time there as a small child, so it's a very fond memory for me. So I hope you'll uh, use these tools. And until next time, from the Puno Coffee Table, God bless everyone.